Stampers, my name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. This is another using the um, stained glass suite in the catalog. It is located on pages, uh, well there's pictures of things you can do with it on 164. 165 shows you the beautiful stamp set with these beautiful fonts and then the die set here that's available and when you order this one this is one where you can save 10 percent if you order the bundle which is the stamp set and the dies and here's what the stamp set looks like um, a butterfly a rose and a bird uh, this pretty mandela then these these uh, four um, sentiments thank you with deepest sympathy have a beautiful birthday a reason to celebrate Today I'm going to be using the bird and I'm going to be using a reason to celebrate and then in the dies and it's stained glass thinlet dies um, and they cut out the butterfly, the bird, the rose and then several other pieces and the one I'm using today is this uh, little stained glass panel. And so that's what I'm going to be using today to make this. And then in addition to that, what I'm using is this beautiful paper um, down here on the bottom. And I'm going to change up my colors just a little bit. Um, so let me show you what it is I'm using. So I have um, my piece of Very Vanilla, which is cut at eight and a half by five and a half, scored and folded at four and a quarter. Then I have a piece of black that is one and seven eighths by five and a half. Then I have a piece of blue. This is the new balmy blue color. And this one is cut at uh, five and three eighths by one and five eighths. Then I have one of my panel of this pretty, um, pattern paper and I cut out the iris and I left the rim of one little section all the way around and that um, will end up fitting on this little card base here with a little bit of a rim all the way around and this ends up being let's see it ends up being five and a quarter by one and a half then I have, uh, I put a different background on this one, and this is basically that same, this is what the panel looks like when it's all together. So I took three of the sections, because three of the sections will fit right next to this panel on the front of my card and give me this background piece that I want. So I took three sections of this, and that measures five and a half. I don't know what it measures across, two and a half. And then I took one more section for the inside. Then you'll need a couple of a piece of scrap of very vanilla to make um, something for the backing for your sentiment and you'll need a piece of scrap black to cut out this little frame. And what I'm changing up on this, I'm, I'm doing a different panel so I'm doing a different flower and backing, but on this sentiment this seems to me uh, it was interesting, but it's just too loose. So what I've cut is a piece of um, very vanilla, and this piece of very vanilla is two and a quarter by one and a quarter. And what I'm wanting to do is to back this little piece right here and lay it flat on the card and then raise my sentiment on top of it. So then you need a piece of card that is five eighths, by one and three quarters for our sentiment here. And I think I'll be able to stamp it on this. I'm, I'm not sure. If not, I have another scrap of vanilla here that we can do. Um, and then you need a piece of scrap of very vanilla also to be able to stamp and punch out your birds. And I have, for this, I have two birds and I've already stamped them and uh, die cut them out. And I have uh, already cut out my um, 
little piece here that is going to, and what, what I did was in order to make this fit on the card, this die cut is just a little bit bigger than uh, I was comfortable with on the sentiment. So I trimmed off one little edge on both ends and now this piece will fit right on this backing piece and then I can raise my sentiment over the top of that. So that is the plan and uh, I'm using my alcohol markers to do my coloring today and this one was done in oranges and so I used uh, an orange uh, piece of ma mango what is it called? Ma mango Melody? Um, on the back to back this one and so I'm using the balmy blue because I'm going to do my irises in, uh, in blue. So um, let's just get started here. Lots of little pieces and I'm going to leave this one to the side and I think the very first thing I should do is do my coloring and I'm going to need some scratch paper here and I'll move all of my pieces out of the way here um, and concentrate on doing my coloring. So I thought I would do these birds in complementary colors to the colors I'm doing on this like I did this one. So uh, I am going to be using the light uh, Knight of Navy and I'm going to be using um, this one which is the dark no I'm not going to use that one I wanted to use the pineapple punch yes the dark pineapple punch uh, for the leaves and um, then I'm going to be using the uh, dark um, old olive for my leaves on here and so I'm going to get to coloring and so it's not so tedious. I'm going to speed that up a bit um, so you can see um, sort of what I'm doing. And I may use the light gray here, light smoky slate for part of the coloring on the flower. So I'll, I'll speed it up and I'll be back in a flash. Okay, so there I have it done and you saw me pull out another couple of colors. The blue didn't come out as dark as I had hoped so I used the darker blue and then I'm trying to duplicate something that's growing in my yard. I have lots of iris and I do have one that has blue with kind of a yellow orange center and so I thought that would be one I could use for, um, for this sample and we'll see what it looks like when I back it on the blue. The colors come out a little bit more. I'm pretty pleased with that. Overall, I think that's great. So I just need to clean up a few little places here with my color lifter, which is positively magic on vellum. It absolutely picks up anything you don't want and picks it all up. That's great. Okay, well I'm pretty happy with that. So um, now it is a matter of doing my stamping and coloring my little birds. And uh, on the little birds, um, what I thought I would do is just put down a couple of different colors here. Um, and I'm going to put one on the inside and one on the outside. And 
I'm going to make them very colorful. <laughs> and so um, it'll take me just a second to do these. Okay, there I have all of my coloring done, and now it's time to sort of put this um, little card together, because other than that, it really is a pretty simple card. So, uh, let's see, I have uh, my piece here to put okay. together. Well, I lost some video. Um, I finished uh, doing my card with what I thought was on camera, and when I looked up, my camera was actually not turned on. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I've recolored my pieces, and I'm starting to, I'm going to pick this right back up where we left off. So here's my card base and all of my pieces that have now been recolored. And uh, my piece of scrap left to do my stamping. And I have my stamp here, which is the celebrate. It is a reason to celebrate. And what we're doing is cutting off the reason to, and in fact, I'm going to set this down here on this and see if I can't pick it up really straight and make that a little bit easier. So I've got a piece of post-it note here and if I'm repeating a little bit I'm sorry you can fast forward through this um, but I couldn't exactly tell where I left off so I know it's real close to putting uh, this piece uh, together uh, on this piece and so that's where I'm going to pick it back up again. So I have my little piece of scrap here, and um, I'm going to take out my Memento ink and re-ink this piece. Um, so, because I just wanted to celebrate um, on here. I suppose I could have put a reason to, but I was just interested in the celebrate. So now this piece can go off, and we should be able to stamp this down here at the top of the page and get a celebrate. That's pretty good. And now I can use my trimmer to see if I can't um, trim this up so that it'll fit on my sentiment the way I'd like. I think I'd already trimmed this, but in order for this to fit on the card the way I'd like, I have to take these two little end rows off here. And what I did to do that was just trim those edges right off on both sides. There we go. And take those and dispose of them. And I'm through with that part of the stamping and I might be through with all of the stamping. So um, the other thing I did was to use a piece of very vanilla to have this sit on the back of. And I'm just going to use a little bit of snail on the back side of this. So I'm just going to add a little bit of snail, mostly around the edges here, and put that in place. I'm going to take off the extra snail that kind of gets in the middle here and put it on my piece of vanilla right flush against two of the edges here 
and I'm just going to trim that to fit. So cutting right along the edge of the bottom of this and then along the side. And then you have a perfect fit. All right, so there's that piece ready to go. And what I'm going to do is put this piece up on dimensionals. And I'm going to center this piece right on my piece that we just made here. There we go. And that'll be all ready now to go on here and it won't be like this one where it's loose and I just the more I look at that the more I don't like it I don't like how wobbly it is okay so now we're ready to start adhering our various pieces together and let's see if I've got all of my pieces here okay so now I've got all of my pieces. Um, there's my two little birds and my sign. And then my pieces for the front of the card, my piece for the inside, and the pieces to back this piece here. So I'm going to first adhere these two pieces together and I can do that with snail. So, um, I'm going to put some snail on this piece here. And put that into place so it's got a similar margin all the way around. There we go. And adhering this piece to this, I showed this in another video, Adhere, adhering vellum is very tricky because you can generally see the glue behind it, but I have made um, a couple of, of discoveries, and um, I think I mentioned in another video, um, I did find a vellum tape runner online, and I've ordered it, and as soon as it comes, I'll let you know how that's going. Uh, so what we're going to do is adhere this piece to here and I'm going to show you this technique of putting vellum down that doesn't show the glue. Um, so what I'm going to do is pick a spot way over here in the corner and I'm going to lay down a pretty good sized blob of Tombow here and I'm going to use a sponge. And in this case, I'm going to put the glue on the back of the vellum rather than on this piece because I don't want to go outside my border edges here. So I'm just going to pick up that glue with my sponge and put it on the piece of vellum here. And the trick with putting glue on vellum is apparently if you put glue all over then you don't see any of it. So now I have this piece glued up and I'm going to put this into place. I kind of have one shot at this so I'm going to try and get my borders right at the bottom here and then just Follow this up the page. And there we go. So now that is completely glued down and you really don't see any of the glue behind that. It is messy, however. And I did get an inquiry, I think it was Judith Siegler that asked, how do I get the glue up off my silicone mat? And I wrote back to there's three ways. One is while it's still moist, sometimes you can pick it up with a wet 
baby wipe and that's one method. You can also take it over to the sink if it's already dried on and wash it um, and using a little soap, soap and water and a scrubby. And this method is probably the most reliable. This is just a, a great big roll of painter's tape and I went to my local hardware store in Denver here. It's the um, Home Depot. I have one real close. And I got the widest roll I could find. And if you take this and drag it across your silicone mat, it will pick up all glue residue. So here, and I'm going to just demonstrate this, and I have to glue down three pieces, so I need to clean my glue up in between uh, putting down the three pieces. So I'm going to use my tape here and um, just keep going to a new part of the tape and running it across your silicone mat and this way you don't have to get up from where you're working um, and it literally takes it takes glitter takes glue I know that somebody wrote to me that a Swiffer takes the gl glitter off of things and powders um, but this is the most reliable thing I've found to take glue off the silicone mat Okay, so that piece is done, and that's ready to go on our card here. And the next piece we have is this piece to go on this side of the card. And on this one, I can put my glue, because it's such a big area, and I'm going to glue this over the edge, that I can put my glue on the card on this one, and, um, uh, and then lay my um, vellum down. So on this one, I'm going to put, and this is a big surface, so I'm going to get this set up and I'm going to put my glue down up in this corner here. And using glue this way on vellum does take a lot of glue. There is no question about it. But it is so much prefer more preferable when you have a wide expanse to put down that I think it's definitely worth it. So on here, I'm going to put my glue down on my card base here. And it doesn't matter if I go beyond the place where I'm going to lay down my other panel because um, I'm going to cover that anyway. So there I've got glue on every little spot I possibly can. Now then, the trick is to get this set down here and put this in place so that it is right along the edge of the side of the card and the bottom edge and get that put into place and get my vellum piece down. And there we go. Looks like I cut that a tiny bit short, and I can solve that by trimming off that top piece. But there we go. We've got my vellum down, and once again, you can't see any of the glue down on my card front here. Okay, so again, I'm going to clean this up, and I can pick up an awful lot of this with just a wet wipe here and then the balance of it I'll take off with my blue painter's tape because I have one more piece to glue down and I want this clean before I get started again. Okay, there we go. Now this last piece is going to go on the inside so I'm going to put down another little glob of glue here and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my glue in place on my page here because once that dries I can also erase any glue residue that is left. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. Put this down so that it is flush with the bottom of the card and flush with the edge of the card and put that piece down. Now, 
uh, again, I have a little bit of glue left on my silicone mat. And I'm going to just take that off. And there my silicone mat is as good as new and ready to go again. And I did get a little glue just outside the edge of this. But once that is good and dry, I can use my glue eraser to take that piece off. In fact, it might be dry enough now. Yep, it is. Okay, so uh, getting my glue off the inside. And there we have that piece down, this piece down. Now what we're going to do is put this piece on here and you can see I can put that flush up against the edge of the card and it will come right up and butt up against this end of the vellum that I put down. So on this then I'm just going to use snail. If you don't own one of these silicone mats they are so handy. Uh, make putting cards together so much simpler and keeping your space free of glue which uh, is in my estimation a real boon. Um, let's see, I need to get that down so that it covers all surfaces. So I'm going to start by flush against the bottom, going up against flush against the edge of the card and then laying the rest of it down. And there we have our piece. And there's a little bit of warp on this vellum piece. And as soon as that glue is completely dry, I can use the edge of my bone folder to straighten and flatten those various areas out, um, just like I would on any other piece that's got a little bit of warp to it. So that's all there is to that. Now, this last piece here, um, when I put this card together, I, I put this up a little higher than I did on this one, and I think it looks a little bit better up here. This can be put on with just snail. And I might have waited to do that, uh, putting this up on dimensionals, but this is going to work. So I'm going to lay this piece down here. And that looks to me so much better than this one where this is floating. I think that's just way too easy to catch. In fact, I may end up taking that one apart and redoing it. Um, and then we have our little birds. And on these little birds, what I'm going to do on the front one here, I'm going to put a mini dimensional down on the back of it. And I'm going to perch my little bird right in here. And you'll notice from the first one that I did, I put the colors much lighter on this little bird, and I think I like that a little bit better anyway. So my bird that is left, I'm going to put some snail uh, down on it and tuck that on the inside of the card down here at the bottom. And there we have the project, and I believe that it is all on camera. <laughs> so, uh, success finally. All right, so there are the cards for today and that is the project for today. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. Um, and anything from this suite you can purchase right from my website, www.albedinger.stampinup.net. And um, this suite is available. These papers are absolutely gorgeous. I'll be doing some more where I just use a feature panel without these backgrounds and use some different kind of backgrounds on them. Um, but I'm going to step away from this suite for a little bit. And I just got a nice big shipment of some of the things that I've been waiting for from Stampin' Up! Um, my, uh, my big haul after pre-order. And so I've got a lot of things to play with here and I'll be back with lots of different projects here. Um, 
So uh, let's see, the prize draw for this month is the Sitting Pretty Suite, and it is a bundle. And so it's here on page 25 in the catalog. And this suite is all of these stamps, which um, uh, cuts out uh, the bird, the squirrel, the dog, the the um, the vase with the uh, uh, with the flat with the uh, leaves in it, and the bench and a little heart. Um, so it cuts out several different things here. And here's the die down here. And on this one, there's an extra bonus die in that this bench, which isn't in this stamp set, is a die that's also in this. And again, I've seen people cut out some of the slats and make this a chair, uh, a shorter bench, and take all of the rest of this off and make this a fence. So there's ve very versatile. Anyway, that is the prize draw for the month of June. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. And or you could join my team. $125 worth of product is available for a $99 start kit kit and then you immediately get discounts of starting at 20 percent you have an opportunity to make more discounts than that as time goes on and um, some people join just for the discounts others want to turn this into a little business and make a little bit of uh, mad money on the side and i'm happy to help with whichever of those opportunities appeals to you. In any case, that's it for me today, and I will be back soon with more projects and more cards. Bye! Bye.